If you're new to investing, it may be hard to know where to start. How to invest in stocks or how to invest my money and how to start investing are three of the most common search phrases online when it comes to this topic. So today in this video, I'll draw from my 18 years of experience in investing and go step by step into how exactly I would invest if I had $5,000 today to start with. Welcome back to Daniel's Brew, where I talk personal finance and career development. When it comes to investing, the very first place to start is to make sure that you've established an emergency fund. This is important. As I've learned in my 40 plus years of living on this planet, life will throw you a curveball when you least expect it and when you're least prepared for it. So you'll want to make sure that you have an immediate source of extra cash on hand whenever the scenario calls for it. The first rule of thumb for an emergency fund is to carry at least one month's worth of living expenses when you're early on in your financial life cycle, like when you first start working full time in an entry level job, and then graduate towards holding three months and eventually six months worth of living expenses when you're senior in your career or income stage. The next best practice is to make sure that your emergency fund is stable and completely liquid so that you have instant access to it whenever you need. This means keeping this allocation in a separate savings or checking account from your day-to-day -day operating bank accounts and making sure you don't touch it ever unless it's an emergency. And this is easy to do. You simply go to your local bank and open up an additional free checking account. For most of the major banks, they have very little stipulations that you have to pass in order to open one up. So this shouldn't be much of a hassle. Now, one thing we do have to touch on is that some people ask me if it's really wise to just keep your emergency fund in a bank account. Depending on what life stage you may be in, especially if you're very senior in your career, you might be thinking six months worth of living expenses is not a small amount. Shouldn't I invest this instead of having this sum of money just collecting dust in a savings or checking account? My answer is no. Remember, this is an emergency fund. It's meant to be your bailout source whenever a true emergency happens. And so what that means is that you can't risk this amount of money potentially diminishing over time in an investment in the market or having to wait two to three business days for a transaction to clear in order to pull out your money. In the case of a true emergency, you'll likely need to be able to pull out your money immediately. From my perspective, the peace of mind of knowing that you have a stable amount of money available at any time whenever you need it outweighs whatever gains you may have had should you have invested it. But keep in mind, we're only allocating a small amount of money into this bucket. So if I started with $5,000, I'd put 6% or $300 in this category. The next category is where I would allocate the majority of my $5,000 in long-term investments in the stock market. The true merit of the stock market is that if you invest early over a long period of time, you're almost fully guaranteed to grow your money and make a positive return. Starting from 1915, you can pick any 30-year period in the US stock market, any 30 years, and if you compare the starting point of the market and the end point of the market across those 30 years, you'll see that the rate of return has always been positive. That means if you invested any amount of money for exactly 30 years in the stock market, regardless of when you started, you will have come out with more money than you've initially put in. So aligning to that strategy, I put 2,500 of my initial $5,000 or 50% of my funds into a conservative index or mutual fund that tracks the overall stock market. Some of the most stable and reliable total market tracking index funds include VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF index, and the VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF shares. These are relatively the safest investment choices in the stock market because they're among the least volatile, meaning they typically spike up or down less with the churn of the stock market because their underlying assets have exposure spread throughout the full composition of the market. Following that, my next allocation would be $1,400 or 28% of the initial $5,000 amount into growth investments aligned to a specific market sector or industry. Historically, in the stock market, the area of technology has been one of the biggest drivers of growth. And if you translate that into indexes, the NASDAQ 100 and those funds that track towards that index have typically shown the highest growth. Take a look at this chart that compares two different NASDAQ 100 tracking index funds versus the total market funds that we discussed earlier. FNCMX and Triple Q have outperformed the VOO and VTI funds on almost every time period on this chart. Of these, FNCMX is my personal favorite, and I've been personally holding this fund for the past 10 years. 
And so this is where I would put the $1,400. Now that begs the question, if the growth funds have better returns versus the total market index funds, why wouldn't you put your long-term investments in this area as well? Well, the reason is that the NASDAQ has typically been more volatile than the total market funds. And earnings reports and new developments from top tech players in the market, like Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Netflix, heavily influence the direction of this index. So it's safer to balance out your holdings by diversifying with the more stable total market index funds and the more dynamic NASDAQ tracking growth funds. The next place I'd put my money is in speculative investments. Speculative investments are simply defined as high-risk investments that have the potential for high growth over a short-term investment period. Modern examples of this include cryptocurrencies, leveraged ETFs, and high beta pharmaceutical stocks. You can think of this allocation as your big bets bucket. Anything risky, but also new and innovative may fall into this category, like that new altcoin that was just launched or triple leveraged ETFs like TQQ or UDAO. If you'd like to learn more about leveraged ETFs and the potential growth and risks of these accelerated assets, check out my older video on this topic down below in the description section. This is a risky category, so I'd only put about $300 or 6% of my initial investment into this area. But if you're very conservative and prefer a slow but steady route to wealth building, I'd recommend that you skip this category and simply put this amount into your growth or long-term investment buckets instead. And lastly, I keep about 10% or $500 of my initial $5,000 for personal growth and development. Investing in yourself is perhaps the smartest investment that you can make. Anytime you advance your personal skills and experiences, that builds up your potential to be an even greater wealth builder in the future. This type of investment can include skills classes to learn new crafts or disciplines like coding academies or photography classes, or paying for career development services like resume writing or LinkedIn optimization services, or certification certifications like Microsoft PowerPoint or Excel certifications to help you thrive in your workplace. Investing in personal growth and development is the only investment that is guaranteed 100% to have a positive return. That return might not always be financial, but it most certainly would be in self-fulfillment and self-potential. So in recap, here are the five different categories of investment with their corresponding amounts that I would deploy my $5,000 into in order to maximize my potential for positive return. And with all things, of course, this is an investment strategy that would work for me, but each person's situation is different. So you'll have to determine for yourself whether or not this strategy works with your own research. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. And be sure to also check out this video on the best mutual funds in my portfolio, which should give you a good insight into how I've structured my investment strategy. So with that, thanks for joining me today on Daniel's Brew, and we'll see you in the next one.